Hi, and welcome back to Step One Network and to our ongoing series talking about bloodborne infections. Today, we're talking about hepatitis B. As a quick refresher, hepatitis refers to infections or inflammation of the liver. Liver sits here, filters your blood, gets rid of toxins, processes medications, helps fight off infections, helps with digestion. You can't live without it. Uh, uh, several different viruses can cause hepatitis. One of them has been named hepatitis B. Hep B is quite common around the world. In some places in the world, as many as one in five people have been infected, and it's actually the leading cause of liver cancer around the world. So we'll talk a little bit about what hepatitis B is, how it's spread, and how you can protect yourself. So hepatitis B infection in teenagers or adults uh, has both the acute or the initial infection, and then the possibility of a chronic or ongoing infection. In terms of the acute infection, about 30-50% of people will actually uh, get a little bit of a mild illness, usually about two months after they were infected. So that can include a bit of fatigue, nausea, abdominal pain, jaundice, turning yellow. In most cases, that's pretty mild. In about one in a hundred people, that can be a really severe illness, leading to liver failure, needing a liver transplant. In most people, about 95%, they will actually be able to fight off that infection, clear the virus from their body, and then they will actually be immune and protected against that virus lifelong. However, in about 5% of people, the virus sticks around, leading to a chronic or long-term infection. With that chronic infection, about a quarter of people will go on to have serious liver complications. So that includes cirrhosis, which is scarring of the liver, that can lead to liver failure, and also the risk of liver cancer. That's the case in adults. In babies or really young kids who are infected, the story's a little bit different. Uh, only about one in 10 will actually develop that acute or initial illness so that we realize that they are infected. However, 90%, nine out of 10, will have that chronic infection, meaning the virus sticks around in their body, causing all of those complications. This is the reason that we offer Hep B testing to all pregnant people in Canada so that we can pick up the presence of that virus in the parent and offer treatment to the baby. This has been really effective in cutting down the rates of babies uh, and young kids who get infected. So that's a little bit about what Hep B is. Next, we're gonna talk about how it's spread. So in terms of the spread of Hep B, it's a little bit different from Hep C in that it can be spread through blood, but it's also spread through other body fluids, especially semen and vaginal fluids, that is sexual fluids. Um, it can also potentially be spread through saliva, not so much with casual contact, but with like bite wounds. That can be a problem. Um, so the highest risk of transmission of Hep B in Canada is typically uh, through sexual contact and then through needle sharing. And in other places in the world, we talked about in terms of the risk to babies around the time of birth. So those high risk groups, uh, we talked about sexual contact. So that includes all types of sex, oral, vaginal, and anal sex uh, that can cause small tears to the mucous membranes, which is like the wet surfaces of your body, or to regular skin. And then if body fluids get into any of those tears from a person who is infected with Hep B, that can be spread to uh, the other partner. This is a higher risk if one or both partners has uh, various STIs that can cause irritation and sores and stuff like that, leading to breakdown of the skin or mucous membranes. In terms of needle sharing, this includes drug use equipment. So like we talked about before, all the equipment involved with IV drug use, snorting uh, or uh, uh, smoking uh, crack pipes and the like, but also needles used for things like piercing or tattooing done at home are big risks for spreading Hep B. Other things that are moderate risk factors for spreading Hep B uh, include having been in prison uh, or homeless or street involved and being a household contact of someone who is Hep B positive. The reason for that is that Hep B uh, can live on surfaces and objects for about a week. So anything that could have blood on it, household items such as razors, toothbrushes, manicure and pedicure equipment, 
or even the uh, blood sampling device for glucose monitoring in diabetics. All of those have been shown to spread Hep B from an infected person to cause an infection in another person. Two final notes, uh, needle stick injuries, whether in a medical setting or accidentally uh, out, in, out in the community, or blood splash injuries where blood or body fluids gets into uh, the mouth or the eye have been uh, causes of Hep B spread. Uh, as well as blood transfusions before 1970. So that's a little bit about uh, how Hep C is spread. How can you protect yourself? Well, it's similar to Hep C in that if you are engaged in any sort of sexual activity with someone who might be positive or whose status you don't know, or with multiple partners, you want to be using condoms or other barrier methods like dams, and never ever share any sort of needle with anyone in any type of setting. In terms of protecting yourself, for Hep B, there is an immunization available. It is very, very effective. It has been offered in Ontario since about 1994 for free for students in grade seven. If you didn't get that full series of three shots, uh, but you are at high risk, you can still receive that free immunization. That is available to people who are household or sexual contacts of someone who is Hep B positive, to people who are uh, using drugs, to men who have sex with men, to people who have certain other STIs or liver, liver conditions such as hepatitis C, people on dialysis or starting chemotherapy, and a few other uh, criteria. If you're going to be traveling to an area that is high risk of Hep B, you should get immunized, although you may have to cover the cost of that immunization yourself. In terms of treating the infection itself, there is no cure. However, if someone is acutely infected, meaning within one week of exposure, there is an IV therapy available that can really cut down the, the risk of becoming chronically infected. For those who do have that chronic or long-term infection, there are some antivirus medications available that don't cure the condition, but help to control it, control virus levels and prevent further damage. Thanks for watching and learning about Hep B. Tune in later this week to a series about HIV. And next week we'll be talking about how you can get tested and know your status. Bye.